Welcome back folks, my name is Last Snow Meal and today we're gonna be talking about Skyrim because today we have the 10th anniversary of this game. So basically today we're going to kind of reminiscence of everything we know about Skyrim and uh, what is the future of the Elder Scrolls franchise in general. First off, I remember buying Skyrim 10 years ago when it came out initially on DVD. And for that time, you know, when it came out, it was just an insane feeling because you know, Elder Scrolls Oblivion was my favorite game back then. I really played it a lot. I've been actually thinking about which game is better for me personally, Morrowind or Oblivion. And it might be because it's generation-wise, I used to play Oblivion a lot more than I did Morrowind. So at the same time, you know, Oblivion was my favorite game when it came to the Elder Scrolls franchise. But for other people, obviously, it's going to be either Morrowind, for some it's gonna be Daggerfall, for some it's gonna be Skyrim. But when Skyrim came out, it offered something really different that Ob Ob Oblivion and Morrowind didn't. It actually like became a lot more popular than those games. And I mean, it came out very buggy. Like I remember initially when I played Skyrim, you know, straight from the DVD, a lot of quests didn't work. And even the main quest, I remember there was a prison you were supposed to rescue this one guy, like relatively early in the game. And you were not able to because his dialogue wouldn't even start. So basically the main story of the game had to stop until it was patched. And um, things were a lot different back then because it wasn't really easy to just patch things on the fly like it is today. Just log into your Steam or whatever and it's going to update automatically. But even with those bugs and glitches and everything which were the problems back then when Skyrim came out, it was still a really good game which had a lot of those crazy moments that stayed even to this day, like for example I used to be an adventurer like you then I took an arrow to the knee meme, you know, or having other memes as well, but it was just a game that everyone were jumping into and everyone were playing. And the story segment and everything were really the strongest suits of the game, with just the amount of things you were able to do. Obviously, some things were not as grand as, for example, in Oblivion or Morrowind. Like, the ending of Skyrim was meh for a lot of standards back then. I remember that a lot of people were not happy with the ending of the game because they thought it wasn't really as spectacular as, you know, when Oblivion was coming to an end, where some things happen. I have to start talking about spoilers for real, the games are out for like 10, 15, 20 years now, like come on. And at that time going through the Skyrim map, it was just an insane feeling because the map itself is relatively huge and when it came out during those times with the amount of things you were able to do on that map, it was truly a different experience. Now at the same time, you know, Skyrim is really popular for mods as well and that's also one of the strongest suits of Bethesda because they really allow modding, they really give you all of the modding tools you need to create a whole new adventure. That's why you have, what was the name, Enderal, which is basically like a new game in within, you know, um, creation engine. And that game now is available on Steam, you can play it whenever, it's, it's free to play. But nevertheless, like, you can see the, the scope of things which were actually created in Skyrim because Skyrim became also a platform in its sense. If you go for the Forgotten City, for example, which was a mod for Skyrim, Forgotten City is now a standalone game. The person who created the mod, a modern storyteller, actually did a full game based on that mod. So yes, a lot of good things came out from Skyrim, a lot of questionable things came out from Skyrim as well, just because it took it took some time for Bethesda to actually patch the game properly, um, so you were able to finish a lot of those quests, but obviously now it works like a charm. Also, one of the strongest things that this game had is just the shouts that you had as Dragonborn, and for that time that was actually really cool to have that attack, because it wasn't really something you had in video games, so just fighting dragons and doing this shout generally and being called Dragonborn was actually really damn cool. And honestly, yeah, that's, that's one of the strongest suits of this game personally for me, along with the atmosphere of the game, because even today, in 2021, 10 years after release, when you go throughout the world, it's, it's just beautiful. Um, even without all of the um, reshades and everything people put in and, you know, the um, special edition which came out, if you just play the classic first edition, it's still going to be a very beautiful game, nevertheless, with just different areas of the map in Skyrim that um, you go from very snowy areas to just really cool foresty mountain hill areas itself. 
But now, 10 years after release, you know, we have a lot of bad things, we have a lot of good things about it, and one of the things which are happening now is that we have the Skyrim Anniversary Edition coming out, which if you don't own a single edition of Skyrim, or well, correct me if I'm wrong, if you don't own the special edition of Skyrim, you have to pay the full 50, 60, you know, bucks price for it, which is obviously questionable for a lot of people, because at the end of the day, this is a 10-year-old game. You know being released and yes you get a lot of content with it i agree uh, but at the same time i would gladly like lower the price for people who are just getting into this game because with all of the content you do get this is still still let's face it a very old game but at the same time you know I i'm against charging 20 bucks for an upgrade this is my personal opinion you can agree disagree with it that's that's your right but um at the same time, it, if it wasn't for special edition of Skyrim, I would be okay with this anniversary upgrade. But because they just keep re-releasing, you know, the same game basically with a few additions and charging money for it, I do have a problem with it. Especially because a lot of these mods which are coming to the anniversary edition, I already played them because they were already available for free. A lot of these things, yes, including fishing. Fishing has been a while around for a while now in, in, in Skyrim, so... That's that's not a really a big deal for a lot of people, but at the same time, you know, it is what it is. It's your money, you pay for it at the end of the day if you want to play it. And that also comes for the future of this game. We obviously have the announcement of the new Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls 6, but, you know, we don't know anything from when it happened. And, you know, that was just a way of Bethesda to say, like, okay, we're, we're working on it because that happened, you know, after Fallout 76. It, was it a little bit too early to announce Elder Scrolls 6? Yeah, it was because we're going to see, see Starfield before we see Elder Scrolls 6. But at the same time, hopefully, when it comes out, it's good. And hopefully, you know, it captures the same feeling that Oblivion, Skyrim, Morrowind, and all of those Elder Scrolls games actually managed to capture for people. And um, Bethesda knows that. Bethesda knows that when they release a new Skyrim, uh, Elder Scrolls game, um, obviously, that's going to be played for the next 10 years. So they have to really, you know, pour everything they have into it. And now, under Microsoft, it's gonna be interesting to see how it develops and which way it actually goes, but um, it's it's a huge win for Xbox, you know, acquiring um, basically the rights for this title because, yeah, this is a big game and it's going to be a, a major driving factor for their platforms, you know, so from that perspective, you know, that's just business, you know, that that's business. Do I like it? Do I, would, I, would I actually like all of the games to come out on all platforms? I would love it, but, you know, business is business. That's just how it goes in the world we live in. But nevertheless, going back to Skyrim, it was truly a magical experience when it came out, you know. With all of the bugs and glitches, it was still, you know, a really cool game. And um, I like to go back to it from time to time, just, you know, to roam ar around the world and just see what happens. But yeah, Skyrim is 10 years old. It's unbelievable, but it is what it is. We're old. We're getting old, folks. And yeah, that's just what I think about it. So thank you so much for watching. We have... The GTA Trilogy Remaster also coming out in a few hours from now. I mean, it's probably gonna be out from when you watch this video, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna be talking about that as well. We have a lot of things to talk about. I'm finally back making videos on a regular basis, and um, thank you for your patience, and thank you for watching this video. Again, smash that like and subscribe button if you want to stay updated with the latest news around the gaming industry and videos I actually upload. And follow us on Twitter and Discord to join our discussion there. And huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is LKM signing out and stay classy everyone. Bye bye.